All right, so I know I normally work on radios and you know this isn't a radio but it's very relevant to radio and uh, so I, figured, I thought I'd do a video on this. I thought maybe some of you guys might be interested in a tube tester. And I picked this up at uh, Ham Fest. And it's the last Ham Fest of the year. So uh, I thought I'd do a uh, an electronics restore on this thing since I'm going to start using this thing to check tubes. Well, we want it more uh, as accurate as possible. And... Uh, in order to do that we're gonna have to to go in and uh, do some component checks and make sure it's up to snuff so we're getting an accurate reading on it uh, the unit works fine I plugged it in and uh, the uh, roll chart here lights up and um, uh, everything seems to function I've run it through a couple of tests with some tubes and stuff and uh, it uh, it seems to be functional now how accurate it is I don't know it seems to be reasonably accurate but uh, I think we might want to go through this and just kind of you know uh, I, I know there's a couple of capacitors in there that probably need to be changed and you know they're probably uh, <clears throat> as old as a tester so anyway anyway uh, we're getting back to the tester itself this is the model 625 and it's made by ICO in uh, Brooklyn New York these testers were the blue face testers or the the older models and production on these started around 1952 I'm not 100% sure if this one was made in 52 or not but it'd be pretty close to it because the uh, the later models of this, they made this tester from about 52, I think, to 61, 61 or 60, 62. But uh, the earlier models were the blue face, uh, just like this one here, and then the uh, the later models were the silver faced, uh, uh, kind of like uh, most any other test equipment you'll see from Ico, uh, like this capacitance bridge here. Uh, these testers here had a, uh, a silver face just like that tester did and uh, so those would be uh, the later models anyway uh, uh, this thing checks uh, tubes all the way back from the 1920s with four pins in them and it checks uh, many different kinds of tubes including local tubes uh, real popular tube from the World War II era a lot of military equipment used those uh, tubes uh, back during World War II and even uh, up into the Korean War and probably even much later than that but uh, anyway this uh, has a, a short light on it and a uh, circuit overload indicator which probably acts as a fuse if something should go wrong it'd probably blow that uh, bulb out but uh, about the only thing wrong with this thing that I can find is uh, this grid cap is missing off this wire which uh, is easy enough to replace you could probably just get a, uh, a grid cap off an old radio and put on it it wouldn't be quite as nice as this setup but you know it'll perform the function so anyway let me uh, let me take this thing apart and uh, we'll take the face off of it which would start with these uh, eight screws or so here and uh, and uh, we'll get a peek at the inside of it all right and here's the uh, inside of the tube tester behind the panel here once you remove it from the uh, cabinet main cabinet there um, it's just uh, pretty much your uh, average uh, emissions tester not really a whole lot to it the main thing uh, in here is this uh, power transformer right here and uh, looks like uh, the switches and stuff here these big wafer switches here that run all the way across there and it switches everything in and out uh, as you flip the 
the uh, those lever uh, switches in the front there it changes the polarity of the different tube settings on the, in the sockets up here so and this thing is uh, got a few capacitors here here's a paper capacitor here goes to the uh, diode tube which is the only tube in here it's a 686 which is a, a pretty common diode tube and uh, then we have our roll chart here and uh, this thing had a little bit of trouble at first I didn't put this on video but I did repair this uh, roll chart uh, one of these uh, gear rods had came out of it and was, had fell out and I had to reposition it back in there just like it was supposed to be and then I oiled up the mechanism here and that rolls pretty easy from stop to stop now so that should be good to go uh, these are our backlight bulbs for our uh, uh, roll chart which is a nice feature to have uh, the precision tester that I have over here uh, doesn't have that feature it had a roll chart on it, it eventually broke after years of me using it but um, it wasn't a lighted roll chart so anyway now this uh, tester here was one of Ico's most popular testers of the era and there's plenty of information online about these uh, including uh, tube uh, information uh, uh, schematics and uh, all kind of different uh, you know tube charts on it uh, like I said even a, a rare and uh, what they call rare and obsolete tube uh, chart too so a lot of information on these things and they even give uh, information for compactron testing which this tester doesn't have a, a, a socket for but I would uh, imagine later models did or uh, it was either uh, you could add it or something like that but there's tube data for, for even uh, compactron tubes alright so here's an example of uh, the typical problems you're going to find with an older uh, piece of equipment with these carbon comp resistors in it we've got a 510 ohm resistor here <clears throat> and uh, if I can demonstrate this with one hand reading about 700 ohms and now we're talking about something that's supposed to have a 5% tolerance on it which is what the gold band indicates so yeah we're way off here uh, <laughs> yeah we uh, probably should just make a clean sweep of this tester and just change all the resistors I don't believe there's a whole lot of them in here um, we got this one here which goes to the light uh, it is still a 10% tolerance on that one but uh, yeah uh, it, this this has got to go I don't even know if I even have a 510 ohm resistor or not but uh, yeah these old carbon comps they don't really hold up too well alright I just noticed a goof up and uh, might I add that uh, uh, you know early in the video I failed to uh, to mention that these uh, testers uh, came in either uh, kit form or pre-wired from the factory in other words finished from the factory well this is a kit and uh, it's pretty obvious it's a kit but uh, here's a goof up here I thought this was a capacitor and didn't uh, didn't really pay it any attention until I got to looking at it that's a 2500 ohm 5 watt resistor right there but we also got this yellow wire right here that attaches to it and uh, it's not even soldered in it's just loose hanging there loose in the switch so what I was gonna do was disconnect this leg here and give that resistor a check but uh, this wire here caught my attention just hanging there so 
Yeah, goof ups uh, probably since day one. All right, so back on this tube tester, it's been a little while. I had to order a 4.7K resistor for this thing. I didn't have any in stock. And I could have swore I had some one waters, but uh, those went missing. So we had to order, order some more. And measuring our, measuring our new resistor. It reads 4.7K, which is what it should read, so let's put it in the tube tester. Alright, so I uh, checked all of our other resistors here and everything looks good. Uh, it's just those few resistors that needed to be replaced and I cleaned all the controls and uh, run this little uh, this tube, the 686, through the uh, through the tube tester, my other tester, and it checks good, so should be fine with the one that's in there. Uh, I don't really see anything else wrong with it, so I believe we'll go ahead and put it back together and see how it works. Alright, so the next thing I need to do before I put this thing back together is replace these grommets that hold these bulbs in. I'm getting tired of the bulb falling down inside the, inside the cabinet there, so... I've got some rubber grommets, just some miscellaneous ones that hopefully should work. And so we'll try these and see if they how they work out. All right, so we got our tube tester back on, and I got our grommets replaced. Got all of our screws back in it, and I got a 6F6 tube here on the uh, on the tester. And we got it warmed up and uh, got everything set to where it should be. So let's see. Looks like we got a pretty good tube. Checking right at 800. So that's a good strong uh, audio output tube there. We'll check a couple of more tubes on it and just see what it does and see how it acts. Nothing really to calibrate on this one. There's no adjustments or anything inside of it. It's pretty much all preset by... The resistor values that's why they're pretty important to have those um values uh real real tight and that way you get an accurate reading all right so we got a philco 43 well i say philco they usually use these in a lot of philco sets it's actually a kenrad 43 tube and it uh, checks almost completely full scale Really, really strong there. Almost a thousand. So, yeah, that was a, a pretty strong tube. And uh, I was surprised it says to set the filament on 25 volts. I didn't realize that uh, the filament on these were so high. But uh, when you turn it down it lower, it uh, it barely lights up. So it uh, must be about right. All right, so here's a 50L6. And it checks about almost 800, so 770, or 780, excuse me. And, uh, yep, 770, so it's, uh, should be good to go, that one. Let's try another 50L6. Alright, so this one's warmed up. See what it checks. It looks like it's backing up a hair. Uh, is that about 660? Yeah, about 660 or so. So there are differences in the strengths of tubes. I haven't changed any of the settings or anything. It's the same tube. So the other one checked about 760 to 7880. So. This one's checking about 680, and then it says backing up a little bit to about 660 or so. So, probably a little getting on the weak side, but it's still okay. Okay, so wrapping up this tube tester, uh, you know, I, uh, I've done a video since I've put this clip in on with using this and you know uh, I 
did go ahead and find a replacement uh, clip off an old radio for that uh, that cap uh, cap wire and um, it's just a uh, you know an old 30s Philco that was pretty much junk and I just you know had the grid cap tubes and I robbed that one off of it so uh, I think that'll uh, that'll do just fine uh, no more than I use this thing and you know it uh, it should work out just fine and you know in checking the tubes uh, you know I've checked uh, quite a few tubes on this thing and I, I found it reasonably accurate so I don't find this thing you know as accurate as one of the top brand testers like Hickok or maybe a Suncor you know some of the Suncor stuff was pretty good but uh, uh, you know I mean for what it is I think it works pretty good and it's plenty good enough to do radio repair so Glad to add this one uh, to the other uh, tube testers that I have already and uh, put it into service. So anyway, thanks for watching.